when you don't know the way of the Spirit. Oak House Church brings to you the word of life, which is able to build you up and offer you an inheritance among all those that are sanctified. Sit back and listen, and may your life become more like that of Christ as you encounter His Word. God bless you. We pray in the spirit, and we sang in the spirit, in the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Sing it together, please. Holy Spirit, you are in me. Holy Spirit, you are in me. I will look to Spirit of God, the excellent spirit is living in, is carrying a blessing, is a, is a carrier of God's blessing. Anyone that is carrying the Holy Spirit in him, anyone in whom the Holy Spirit, this excellent spirit of God is living inside of him, you are not only a blessed man, but a blessing in your journey. Just like God said to Abraham, I will bless you, I will make you a blessing, 
and you'll be a blessing to others, to many generations, many nations. And the same way, you are a blessing. Not only that you are a blessing, you are blessed and you are a blessing. And the reason is because of the Holy Spirit that is living inside of you. And we keep talking, we keep preaching, we keep teaching, we keep sharing, we keep doing all of that. And trusting God that the light will come one day and it will shine and will illuminate your heart. And then you begin to see. One thing I have found out is about spiritual things. Is not just hearing. You can be hearing it. You can hear it and even repeat it and even recite it. You can hear it. You can recite it. You can quote it. You can say it. You can even preach it. But the, the reality, the revelation, hasn't reached the spirit man. When it reaches the spirit man, there will be a reaction. The kind of reaction that when you put your hand inside a fire, inside a hot water, a boiling hot water, there is going to be a reaction, is it not? You can't put your hand inside a boiling water and remove it and feel, except the water is not hot. But if it is boiling, you put your hand inside, there will be a reaction. That is how any time revelation enters your heart, there will be a change, there will be a transformation, there will be a reaction. It comes like light. That's why the Bible said the light shines in darkness. And darkness gave way. That darkness could not comprehend it. What it means is that the light shines in darkness and the darkness disappears. There was a reaction and there was evidence. It's clear. That's what happens whenever revelation shines, whenever revelation comes, whenever the light shines. Sometimes what I do, I will carry my hand on this, my head, and say, God, this head, this head. Damage my ignorance, destroy it, remove it. Light, let the light shine. Let the mind of Christ, the sound mind, let the light shine. This is my heart, illuminate it. Let the, I pray that prayer that God will grant me that wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of it. That the light, the, the spirit of understanding, enlighten my heart, enlighten. Give me, anoint my eyes with eyes out so that I can see. Take away this blindness. Give me light. Let the light shine. Reveal yourself. Reveal Christ in me. I want to know him. Open the scriptures. Open your word. Remove the veil, cause me to see. Because if I can see it, I can take it. And when I take it, I become it. It's about revelation. It's about revelation. Jesus said, ask me, Revelation 3.18, Ask me, and I will anoint you, your eyes, with eyes salve, so that you might see. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thy eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. I tell him, I say, Lord, I am blind. Heal me of blindness. The miracle of 
sight. Physical sight and spiritual, physical blindness and spiritual blindness, which one do you prefer? If you are asked to choose between the two, physical blindness and spiritual blindness, which one do you, assuming you are asked to choose? Hey, to fear well. I beg, I choose, I choose spiritual blindness. Some people say, I choose, I don't want to be blind. If you ask me to choose between the two, spiritual blindness and physical blindness, I will choose physical blindness. Let me have spiritual sight. And I can see with my eyes. My blindness has not, it doesn't have part two. You are a spirit. Hello? Hello? I say you are a spirit. Don't you think so? You don't think so. How many of you how many of you know that you are a spirit? Okay, some people don't know. That's why everything is about food. Everything is about food to eat, walk, job, house, car, drive. That's what you think. Man is a spirit. This, your body is a, is just like this cloth you are wearing. This is cloth upon cloth. The first cloth you are wearing is this, your body, this, your skin. The real man is inside. He's looking through the windows of your eyes. And he's listening through the windows of your ears. That's why Jesus said, a body has thou prepared me so that I can live in that body and do what I want to. Because I am, if you are going to stay on this side of life, on earth, if you are going to walk on earth, then you need these clothes, this body. If you are not going to live on this earth, you don't need this body. That's why heavenly beings, they don't have this body. But there is another body that they have. A spiritual body. Man is a spirit. Amen. I promise I was going to tidy up something that I started uh, a few weeks ago, or months, or last month anyway. When I started talking about the seven times that Jesus Christ shed his blood, and I said one of which is the crown. When they put a ton of crown on his head and then beat him with a reed from his hand, and then blood is all his face. And then his face was mad beyond recognition. I've shown you all the scriptures. And all those blood that was shed, I decided to stay on this particular one because we struggle with it a lot. Because I have always wanted to find out from, you know, I have a very, very, very inquisitive mind. I ask a lot of questions to God. I think a lot on the scriptures. And so, what has bothered me a whole lot of time is that when I read the Bible, the scriptures, this Bible, when I read it, okay, and I see the promises of God, the blessings of God, and what God had done with some men in the past, in the Bible time, and also in the in lifetime. And then I look at our lives. 
I reflect on the number of Christians that we have in the body of Christ, and I look at the level of um, the preachings that we are giving and all the prophecies and the prophesying and all the prayers. And you remember Nigeria is one of the most, not one of the most, Nigeria is the most spiritual nation on earth and all of that. Yet, he ranks amongst the first five most impoverished nation on the earth. Hunger, poverty. I don't know whether we have moved beyond or uh, below the one dollar level. That an average Nigerian lives below one dollar. For those of us who are Christians, what are actually going on? What's happening? We work so hard. We labor. An average Nigerian is not a lazy person. Forget about all these Yahoo boys, all these people that call themselves Yahoo, that they are stealing and cheating and all of that. But an average Nigerian is very industrious. He's a hard work person. That's why on a Monday morning now, you come out in the street, you will see them everywhere. Every nook and cranny, you see them, they open up one small thing. They will even block the road, build the whatever on top of, uh, they will say on top of convent, on top of a gutter. And they are cooking food there, and they are selling it. And they are, they want to make it. And most of them are Christians. What actually is a problem? There must be a problem somewhere. You don't think so? There has to be. Because David said, David, the man that God blessed, he said, I was young, now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsake it, nor his seed beg for bread. But we see the righteous forsaken today. We see the seed of the righteous begging bread. Christians born again. To me, something is wrong. And so, each time I keep reflecting on it, I keep thinking about it, I keep praying. And then, I began to have understanding. And that is what brought me to the fact that Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6, like I said in the past, he said, not by might, the second part of that verse said, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, say the Lord of hosts. And what he says, what he means is that life is essentially empowered or powered by the spirit. Because man is a spirit, life is powered by the spirit. Essentially, life is powered by the spirit. I also read first. Samuel chapter 2 and verse 9, 10, 11, and down the line. From verse 6, he said, The Lord is the one that killeth and maketh alive, for he bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. And then verse 7, The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich, he bringeth low and, lift, and lifted up. And he raised up the poor out of the dust and lifted up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he set the world upon them. And verse 9, he said, He will keep the feet of his saints, and the wicked shall be silent in darkness, for by strength shall no man prevail. Life is empowered by the Spirit. So generally, when you look at the whole life, the whole world, the human beings that are in the world, this life is about blessings and cursings. It's either you are blessed or you are cursed. 
Some are living under the blessing and some are living under curses. And I said that blessings and curses, these are, they are spiritual powers. They are spiritual powers by which these blessings and curses are brought upon humanity. And these blessings and causes, they come by words or by written words or they come through objects and all of that. Either blessing or causes. Everything about this life is either you are on the blessing side or you are on the causes side or the cause side. That's the two things about this world, about this life. Every man that you see today is under either a, under a blessing or under a curse. Don't forget this. Life is empowered by the spirit. And this spirit is the supernatural ability that brings about a blessing or cursing upon, upon a person. And these blessings or cursing, they are transmitted through words. They are transmitted through written words. They are transmitted through objects. They are transmitted through places or things you expose yourself or you encounter and all of that. Everything about this life. Don't ever forget about it. So if you ignore this and you keep pursuing the blessing and you keep pursuing prosperity, you keep pursuing whatever it is, to be great, to achieve one thing or the other, you will end up getting frustrated at the end of the day. So, I read Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. Christ has redeemed us from the course of the law. Be made a cause for us, for it is written, cause is everyone that hangeth on a tree. So today, I've said before that a cause, another way you explain a cause is Actually, God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenlies. It's just like um, when you pick up your phone, now you call somebody on the phone, and then there is a network failure, or is a network, I can't hear you, and all of that. Does it mean that um, the network provider or the service provider are not sending their signal? Is that what it means? No, it's not, not, that doesn't mean the signals are there. They are sending their, on their own side, there's no problem. But on your own side, either your phone has a problem or the environment where you is not receptive and all of that. But as long as the service providers are there, they are doing their job and there's nothing on their back end, nothing wrong on their, from their back end. So that is how it is. The blessings of God are coming our ways constantly. But there is something that hinders it, that obstructs it, that makes it not to become a reality in our lives. We have worked so hard. We have done so much. If you see what people go through in order to make ends meet, in order to survive in this life. I told you the other day how I was watching uh, um, uh, a particular station. They showed how some people were trying to smuggle themselves to another country. And if you see the means by which they do this, it's unthinkable. I say, so this is what a normal, a human being will go to just to travel from his country to another country for a greener pasture. Because his own country, according to him, is failing. So he must make ends meet. If we will learn to 
solve the problem of life. There is a problem and the solution is found in God's word. Solution is here. That's why we call upon Jesus Christ, we worship him, we do all that. He's not, he's not fake. Jesus Christ is real. He's a good man. He's a good God. He loves his people. There is no father, no genuine father that does not love his children. There is no genuine father that will not go out of his way to make sure that his children are well taken care of. There is no genuine father that will not pay any price when he sees his children going through some things and all of that. And there is something that he could, there is no father, no mother, no parent, genuine, that will not do something about it. And that is why Jesus said, if our fathers who are evil, they know how to give good gifts to their children, how much more will your heavenly father give? The Holy Spirit. And when you talk about the Holy Spirit, the greatest thing that God will give to you as a man is the gift of himself. He gave you his spirit. There is nothing else he cannot give you. He gave you his spirit. He gave you Jesus Christ. If you could not withhold Jesus Christ above, gave him up. Is there anything that he will not with him freely give you? The answer is no. He loves you. He loves me. He loves us. But the problem is the environment where we find ourselves that have brought about hindrances, obstructions, and all kinds of things that try to keep us away from reaching to that blessing that God has prepared for us. Because we are still living in this dark world. First John 5, 18 tells us, and we know that the whole world, the whole world, including Lagos, including your village, including Aso Rock, including Banana Island, including White House in Washington, D.C., including that America you want to go to, including UK you want to travel abroad, including that Canada, the whole world lieth in wickedness. Wickedness is causes that brought it. So today, I just want to share some things that I believe that will help some of us, if not all. But before I say it, so that your heart won't go fail. One thing about God is that no matter how bad, no matter how dirty, no matter how impure, I don't care how bad you have gone. I don't care how complicated and how mercy your situation and your life is when God handles you when God handles you hmm, he will wash you he will cleanse you you will never recall even you you won't believe that you are the same person you like me you know I tell you people <laughs> where I came from that is the world that I came from was a bad one I was an evil man you know what is evil you know what is called evil you know what is called evil you are looking at me a pastor how can you be saying this do you know what is evil I was an evil man so much that the Bible says, when you remember those things that you did in the past, you will be ashamed. You wouldn't even want to talk about it. I was that kind of a person. And as holy as you are, as, as born again as you are, there are some, of, some things that if, if I tell you now, the way you, you wouldn't even look at me as a man of God again. But that is in the past. You know what happened? God picked me. 
He washed me. He cleansed me. He sanctified me. And it tells me, Fred, you, do, you no longer have any past. There is no past. All those things. I'm just saying it in order to make a point. But as far as heaven is concerned and God is concerned, it never existed. First, um, Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19. For some of you who will think verse 18. Come now and let us reason together, say the Lord, though your sins be as what? Scarlet. They shall be as white as what? Snow, as white as what? Have you seen the snow before? You know how white snow is. So can you imagine the, your sin was like the scarlet, but I will wash you and you'll be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. It's just describing what you'll be like when God is true with you. When his blood touches you, when his spirit touches you, you become a brand new man. No wonder he said, is, if any man is in Christ, he's a brand new man. All things are passed away, and behold, all things have become what? New. Say, I am a new man. Say, I'm a brand new man. There is a song that says, I'm a new creation, a brand new man. All things are passed away, I'm born again. More than a conqueror, that's where I am. I'm a new creation. A brand new man. So, that is who you are and that is what it is. And nothing can be truer than this. You know why? Because Satan has a way of drawing you back. Telling you about your past. Satan will always remind you about your past. Did you hear what I said? How many people has he reminded about his past? If he has reminded you, if he has told you about your past, can I see your hand? That's what, and he will not stop. You think he's going to stop? He will do that, and that is his ministry. When he reminds me, when he tells me about my past, I will tell him about his future. <laughs> you know his future. I tell him about his future. I say you are going to born when you were born in the lake of fire with brimstone, unquenchable fire forever and ever. You that is talking about my past, your future is worse than anything. He will leave me alone. When he does it, he leaves me. He knows. And I tell him, be, be, besides, it is written. <laughs> I told him, I say, remember how you came to Jesus Christ, what he did to you. It is written and you left. And so it is written concerning me. I have been washed in the blood. I have been sanctified. I have been justified. There is no more condemnation to me that I am Christ because I love God and I walk in the love of God. So the law of the spirit of life which is in Christ has set me free from your law of sin and death. So get thee behind me. He will say, yes, pastor. 
you use the word of God and you deal with it. It's a word that you use. Not Satan, eh? Satan, <laughs> Satan. Enough is enough, for oh. I'm warning you. There's one brother I used to know in those days in Abuja. His prayer, when he's praying, he says, Satan, enough is enough. Enough is enough, Satan. <laughs> Satan, enough is enough. I say, Mr. Man, shut up your mouth. Pray the right. And that's how he prays. Which one is Satan, enough is enough? <laughs> He said, when you tell him enough is enough, he said, okay, he has done enough. It's a word that puts him out. Amen. So let me just mention to you and then we'll take it off from there. There are four major sources through which causes that hinders the blessings of God from coming to us. So if you know what they are, you keep yourself from. The first source of cause or causes is God. Like I have told you before, when man is seen in the garden, cause came. In Galatians chapter 3, I've shown you that before. And God said to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, because anywhere God has any investment, hello, just listen. Anywhere there is investment, God makes investment in a person, in any man. When he makes an investment there, is a point of attraction to the devil. Just like, just like if you, if you have money now, maybe there is uh, something happen and you win a lottery and then they said you have, uh, you've just won 700 million. Kidnappers will want to pay you a visit. Arm robbers will want to pay you a visit. Your cousins and your uncles, uh, you know, they will want to pay you visits. Why? Because of something good that has happened to you, that money. So whenever there is an investment, there is attraction from the world of darkness against it. You are one of that investment because my Bible tells me in the book of Ephesians, I've read it before in chapter 1, that you may know the riches of his glorious inheritance in the same. God made a lot of investment in your life. And that is why Satan is fighting to turn nail, everything to stop you. And you will not know what is the game plan because God has made so much investment in the, and the devil has sworn because Jesus said his ministry is to steal and to kill and to destroy. And he will never stop until he wreck you. But he will never succeed in Jesus' name. Because many are the afflictions of the righteous, or God will deliver them from. Although you fall seven times, you will rise seven times. He will keep on making that approach, encroaching into your space. To do what? To stop you, to kill you, to hinder you. And that is what he's doing. And he uses all kinds of gimmicks and all of that. So when you fall, when you fall a victim of it and all of that, he enjoys and he laughs and God is not happy. God is not an author of evil. God doesn't do evil. God doesn't bring sickness. God doesn't bring poverty. God doesn't bring all those things to, to his children. You see what we, we read in that uh, first Samuel chapter 2. He said he is the one that blesses the righteous and establishes you, but the wicked, he will not find no place. So God is interested in you. Don't be deceived. Don't let anybody preach anything contrary to that. But the thing is that, yes, God has blessed us. So why am I not walking or experiencing this blessing as I should? And I begin to say that there are reasons, one of which is that, there are things that we do that hinder those blessings from coming to us or things we get ourselves involved in. And I said, the causes, the means by which it comes, number one is God. And I showed you 
In that Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 3, please. Just have to be very fast. Now the Lord said unto Abraham, Get thee out of, the, out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. And verse 2 said, And I will make thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. Verse 3. And I will bless them that bless you, and I will curse him that cursed you. Anyone that curse you, I will curse. Why will, Abraham, why will God say this to Abraham? Because Abraham was going to be a father of many nations. Because God has blessed Abraham. He promised him all kinds of things. That, and so Satan is out to destroy him. So the same thing with you. You have received the gift of the Holy Spirit, the greatest gift ever, that even in the time of Abraham, he didn't have that kind of gift, the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so now that you have received the Holy Spirit, God has blessed you with all spiritual blessings in the heavenlies in Christ. And he has made this available to you. So Satan is aware. And so the moment you receive Jesus Christ and you become the righteousness of God in Christ, you are a candidate of blessing and the source that carries the blessings of God and the glory of God. And Satan is not going to fold his hand and be looking at you and be smiling. That's one thing that we don't know. He will fight and he will never stop until you go to be with the Lord. Until he is taken out of the way. He fights every day. And the way and manner that he comes, most of the time we don't know, we are ignorant. And so we keep on falling victims of his antics. The Bible says we should not be unawares about the devices of the wicked. So I read for you in the book of um, Deuteronomy chapter 27 verse 15. You see, God is the one also making all those causes. I told you the very first source of cause is from God. And the Bible says, Cause be the man that maketh any graving or molding image, an abomination unto the Lord, the work of, his hand, of the hands of the craftsman, and put it in a secret place. And all the people shall answer and say, Amen. And verse 16, you know, on and on and on. He said, Cause be he that lighted by his father or his mother, and all the people shall say amen. If you, if you dishonor your father, if you dishonor your mother, your parents, you come under a curse. Anything you are doing in your life, it will not succeed. If you lie, be praying 25 hours in a day, you will not. And I told you, these are spiritual forces or powers that bring about either blessings or causes in the life of people. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 5. Thus says the Lord, God is the one saying, Cost be the man that trusted in, that put his trust in what? And make it flesh his arm, and whose heart departed from the Lord. Cost is the man that put his trust in man. And make it man his arm. You boast in man. You know who I am. You know who my father is. You know because you are connected to so, so, and so. Connection, those who know this, those who knows people. You are connected to the powers that be. So that's your pride, that's your, your, your boldness, that's your confidence. And you know that when you need money, you know somebody and some, some so, so, so person you are going to just go to and he will give you that money and all of that. That you are putting your trust and your confidence in man. 
how you know is that when you have a, how you know whether you put your confidence in man or not, is when you have a need. Hmm? Maybe money, need for money. Or somebody to help you. Maybe there is a problem and you feel that, you know, one uncle or somebody, a, a, a family friend and all of that, that have been so good to you people and stuff like that. And so when you have this problem, you approach the person. And, when, and you know that he's always helping. And you go there and he tells you that he can't help. You feel battered. You feel disappointed and dismayed and disoriented and all of that. You know what it means? You know what it's showing? It means that your trust is a man. And some, their trust is in, in one thing or the other. And when you, when you are, God does not want you to shift your trust from him to any other. Man can be the channel through which God blesses you, but the man is not God. When one door closes, when that door closes, God opens another. God is the one that opens the door. So if that person wants to make himself God in your life so that you can now trust him against God, you will say no to that person. To hell with whatever it is that you want to give to me. I will not take it. So, God will open another door for you if your trust is in him. And you will, not, you will not cut corners. You will not compromise. You've got to learn. That is why, you see, that is why we keep talking about your foundation, Jesus Christ, the foundation, Jesus Christ, the foundation. Anyone that believes in this rock will never be dismayed, will never be disappointed. He doesn't want you to stand on any other stone except that rock. Jesus Christ is a rock. He is a foundation upon which you must stand. You must not shift. He has promised you, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will be with you. I will provide. And it's not even that I will provide. I have made that provision for God has blessed us and given us precious promises by which we have entered into our inheritance. God has made them available. And so what we need to do is to learn to trust. Learn to trust. Learning to trust him. And never to put your trust in man. If I put my trust in man, my message, the message that God gave me to preach would have changed. Because I want to say it to please you because I'm looking at you. Because I know you give me. And when the alert comes on my phone, my phone will vibrate. You know there is a kind of alert that will come to your phone. You will vibrate. When they send the alert, 10 million naira, 20 million. Just to buy pure water. Say, Pastor, this one is for pure water. 20 million to buy pure water. <laughs> if, you're, if that alert comes to your phone, your phone will, whether you set it on vibrate or not, it will vibrate too. And then, because of that, whatever that person does is good. You will never preach against it. You will never say anything bad about it. It changes. My trust can never be on any man. Ah, Pastor, does it mean that you don't trust us? I trust you. I believe you. I trust you, I believe you, and I love you. But that does not mean that if I see something that is wrong in your life, I'm not going to point it out. We might quarrel. And when we quarrel, we get well, we get fine again. And we keep, I don't keep malice, I don't keep, I will, me, I will quarrel with you. Whether in the open or, and when I finish, I will mend fences. There's one that, the one, the one man that lives at the back here, that's, 
one day, one day, if you see me that day, I was shouting at him and telling him what you are doing is wrong. The man was furious. He said every single thing and all of that. Walked away was so sad. So the following day, he saw me while driving. He kept the felicity. He, he drove his car. I kept quiet. The next day, another day, I saw him again. He kept his face like this. So the third time I saw him passing, I went and stood in there. I said, oh, God, stop. Hey, stop. Which one be your own? Is it because of the yeah, We are fine. You are a man. I am a man. We settled our whatever. What I said, I said. And all of that. So let's. So we became friends again. And we kept on going. We have. So afterwards, he started, he kept coming and coming. And so we have sorted it out. Why will, why will I carry face for you? Say what you have. If you do it, I will tell you. And when I finish, I see you tomorrow, I will still go after you. And make you my friend. It is then that when you when you now said no, I will never talk to you again. I will never do this. I said, okay, no problem, but I will keep talking to you. If I see you, I will greet you. If you greet me, fine. If you don't greet me, as far as it is within me, my power, I must be at peace with everybody around me. That's why. Should I say, okay. Zechariah chapter 5, verse 1. I've read this before. Then I turned and lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a flying roll. And he said unto me, Who said? Who said? The Lord God said unto me, What seest thou? And I answered, I see a flying roll. The length thereof is 20 feet, and the breadth thereof is 10 feet. Just assume that 10 cubit is 10 feet. Just assume. Then said unto me, This is a what? That does what? That goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. For how many people? Everyone that does what shall be cut off as on this side according to it. And everyone that sweareth shall be cut off as on that side according to it. Verse 4. I will bring it forth, said the Lord of hosts, and it shall enter into the house of who? And into the house of he that sweareth falsely by my name. And he shall remain in the midst of his house and shall consume it and the timber thereof and the stone thereof. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something that you don't know. Let me warn you. This is the reason why people are destroyed. You see, these people who are stealing government's money and all of I want you, I want you to look closely. You remember, give me some, give me some 73. Give me Psalm 73. Truly God is good to Israel, even to such as of a clean heart. Have you seen it? Those of them that are of clean heart, God is true and good to them. Now, but as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped, almost fall. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of who? You know them. You know all of them. When I saw the prosperity of the wicked, they are, they are living a sumptuous life. Verse 4. For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is what? They are power brokers. They will hold a nation. And no one can, they are the cabals. We have them in Nigeria today. They are not in trouble as other men. Neither are they plagued like other men. 
COVID-19 came, they are spared. Because they build wall around them and all of that. Some of them were caught anyway. Therefore, pride compassed them about as a chain. Violence covered them as a garment. If you see what they do in the secret, they shed blood. I was telling you what this way. If you hear, if you see the kind of thing these people do, if you see what they do in the dark, hmm? if you see what they do, you will not want to live in this country with them. I don't, I don't, one of them, one of, one of, one, one man, I forgot. He said if any of these one wins, become the president, he said he will not live in this country with them. He will relocate. Talking about those two heavy ones, you know. You see, if any of them wins, they'll become the president. He said he will not live in this country. So he said their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than heart could, could do what? Could wish. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. They set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue walk it through the earth. Therefore, his people returned hither, and waters of a full cup are wrung out to them. And they say, How does God know? And is their knowledge in the most high? Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. Verily, I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocency. This is what he was saying, David. So what is the need? Being holy and being righteous and all of that. When these people are not. For all the day long have I been plagued and chastened every morning by God. I'll be correcting you and be chast chastising you. And he doesn't do anything to them. Because they are bastards. The Bible said if, if your father does not correct or chastise, it means you are not a son. But what? Bastards. But God doesn't do that to them. But he does that with you. Because he doesn't want you to waste. If I say I will speak to us, behold, I should offend against the generation of thy children. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. <laughs> when he was thinking about it, his heart almost broke. It was too painful for him to bear. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then I understood their end. Surely thou didst set them in the sleepy places and casted them down into destruction. How are they brought into desolation as in a moment they are utterly consumed with terror? That's how they go. That's how they die. Heart attack. You remember the one that the, the one that escaped prison in the UK? This guy's himself like uh, came back to Nigeria. I don't know the name, I've forgotten. I don't even know which part of the country that he came. But I knew how he went. He was just climbing a staircase. Because we don't say this, evil is evil. There are many of them. Is that the kind of life you want to live? And not to, you bring that, you bring it upon your children. Look at them, look at them, look at them. So you steal, you steal from your brother, you steal from your sister, you defraud your brother, you defraud your sister. Your own blood brother, that is in the Lord. Even if the person is not in the Lord, it's not in your nature because you are a member of the kingdom. You live in the, you, the kingdom that will you come. The kingdom of God is about righteous. You must live that life. We don't steal from our brother. 
cheat your brother. You don't defraud. You don't lie. You don't cheat. Because if you do, you bring a curse on your life. Even though you are a Christian, you are blood brother, covenant brother. This is one of the reasons why things are not working for us. And I've said it a number of times, a couple of times. You see, if you want your business, you know, somebody told me, one of our parties said, you know, which one do I have for the Northern Art? Because I'm always firing, especially Igbo people. It's not only Igbo people, it's everywhere. But the thing is that because I have had the dealings with my people over time, and an average, okay, uh, people, you know, Igbo man, and Igbo, anywhere you go on the face of the earth, you will see Igbo man. Anywhere, there is no village in, in this world. You enter, you will not see an Igbo man. He's doing business. Go to the east and see devastations. You buy, you go to buy some, you can't prosper, you cannot succeed. You make hundred million from that four one nine that 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 your manipulation. You make that hundred million naira. The next day, the next whatever you go, you see that whole one hundred million naira is consumed in something else. If you look, you will see that money. It's like somebody who he created a bag, a bag of money, and all of that. There is a hole under. As you are putting the thing, is falling, is escaping. And they never knew why it is like that. Buy something now from any from them. Buy some maybe now you bought you now, and then you go out and then you put your leg inside and, and you find out that the thing is too hard. And just return it, give me back my. You will never. You are there. Right? Somebody, I sent somebody to go and buy a couple of well, jeans, trousers from. What he bought, he brought it. He did it. That same day, or that same moment, or is too tight. I said, return it. The guy, he said, he can't give him the, he can't give back the money again. He said, never. I said, nothing, never. There is a shoe that they gave me. From UK, it has a label on that. Hmm? He said, as long as that label is there, any time, any day you return it, they will give you your money. That is, you have won it, and you feel that it is not whatever you return it. They, you, they will change it for you. I give you. If they will ask you which one, what do you want? Is it money that you want? They will give you back the money, or you want another product, another whatever? They will give you. True or false? Come to Nigeria. After you have gone home with it that day, you come the following day. That is the reason why nothing is working. Wickedness is a cause. And guess what? These people, when the, once, once it is 12 o'clock, you see them, they close their shop, close everything. They are doing angelus. They are praying. And when they finish again, they go back again. What kind of life is that? Defrauding and cheating and being wicked. It doesn't work. You make 10,000 naira today. Tomorrow you spend 20,000. Go to that, um, 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 where do they say that part? What do you call that place? 
go to Ladi for buy to go and buy part. What they are giving you is the one that they have worked on and painted and all of that, and they will sell it as an original brand new, and they know it is not good. Cheating, defrauding. There is this guy. He say he's in your house. You are going to waste. So what do I do? You won't see me, I won't get involved. I won't touch it. One naira, one cobble. Isn't me, even me as a pastor, go ask them in the account and all of that. The church doesn't pay me. I don't touch one naira, one cobble from the church. You won't see, not one. Because I don't want trouble at all. I depend on God. When, if I get, if anybody gives me, I take. If I don't give me, I remain that way. I have learned how to abase. I have learned how to abound. If you, people who are around me, you will tell me, I would, you, people who are around me will tell you that I always say I don't like food. I eat once in a day. The more you see, you bring food and all of that, it is irritating to me. Is it not this stomach, this one? What when I'm one plate of rice, you put it inside here. Is enough for 24 hours? Is enough for 24 hours? <laughs> I've tried as much as possible to simplify my life. Personally, this is my personal, because I don't want trouble. And I, I eat white rice with the stew. I eat it. When I eat it, I finish. I drink water. I am fine. See me. Am I not okay? It, part of this thing is white rice. Only white rice. And I'm fine. I'll be looking at, you, you want to eat this one, you want to eat Misabi, you want to eat a uh, tantalizer, you want to eat KFC, you want to eat uh, Domino, you want to this. That's why you'll be looking for who to steal from. Take me out, take me out. And when you go, how much does it? Uh, since we know he has never taken me out. So he's going to go and steal in order to take you out. The Bible said, if you have food and clothing on your body, you should be satisfied. He didn't say if you have uh, also fast food, add to it. Simple life. Take it easy. If you're not faithful in that, which is another man, is it not written? your own will not be given to you. If you defraud other people, like some of you who are working for somebody and you are not faithful in that business, you are not faithful in that office, what you are doing, you are supposed to come to work by 9 o'clock, by 12 o'clock you are coming and all of that and you lie that you are work, and you give so many funny reasons. In somebody's business, you are running down. And then maybe in area of finances and all of that, you are manipulating papers and figures and all of that. Fine! Then tomorrow you want to start your own business. Is it not? You want to start your own business and you are going to be blessed. You are a liar. You won't succeed. It's not a, it's already, there is already a cause. And if you have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? Who? He said, who is he? Keep on yahooing, doing yahoo. Not only yahoo, you do gmailing. Not only yahoo. When you finish yahoo, you go to gmail. When you finish gmail, you go to hotmail. Go to all of them. When you finish, we shall see. This flying roll is in your house. It will bring you down. You, when you see eh, the end, 
you will, you will live in regret. And not only that you live in regret, you look at your children. You look at what you have done, brought upon them. Or nobody, no Christianity, no integrity anymore, no truth anymore, no sincerity, no honesty. So what are we doing as Christians? Lying not to one another is not what the Bible says, but we do so. And at the end of the day, you expect your life, your faith life to be sound. It's a lie. You can't. We wonder why things are not working and all of that. Heaven does, there is no curse in heaven. There is no unrighteousness in heaven. There is no all of these things in heaven. It doesn't exist. And that is where you belong and that is where you go to collect your prayers and all of that and make your prayers. Another way causes come. He come through men on behalf of God. Through men on behalf of God. You can say men of God, but I don't want to say men of God. Because if I say men of God now, you see, you are also a man on behalf of God. You can curse. You can curse a man. You can curse someone. You. Give me Joshua chapter 6, verse 26. Joshua 6, 26. And Joshua adjured uh, them at that time, saying, Cost be the man before the Lord that riseth up and builded this city, Jericho. He shall lay the foundation thereof in his firstborn, and his youngest son shall be set up the gates of it. It was a curse that Joshua put on the land of Jericho. The the, the, I think it was two years ago or so, we went to Israel. We went to Jericho. I saw Jericho. They said, this is Jericho. I couldn't believe it. Devastation. Hundreds of years. A curse was placed there. By a man. As a result of what happened, what transpired. First King chapter 16, verse 34. First King 16, 34. In his days, did Hiel, the Bethelite, build Jericho. He laid the foundation thereof in Abiram. He is what? So there was a curse. Your first son is going to go. I'm going to bring that curse upon your family. There are people who are carrying curses. Christian, I'm talking, I'm not talking about unbeliever, I'm talking about Christian. There are Christians who are carrying curses, not because God, because, but because of what they did. And uh, because if you go and cheat, if you defraud someone of his resources, of his hard earned money, if you stab somebody at the back, if you do something evil to someone, your fellow brother, you are going to come under that burden of curse. No matter who pray for you, no matter who lay hands on you, no matter how many times you come for the power night, is it power night? Night of power. No matter the how many of prayer and all of that, it will still remain there because there is a curse and it hinders the flow of God's life and blessing to come to you. 
no matter how many times they shout on you and say, come out, come out, that demon will never go out. If you finish, you will manifest. So when you finish the manifestation and all of that, it will still remain there. It can't come out. Because there is a cause. And as long as that demon is there, it will hinder you from being prosperous. It will hinder the blessing of God in your life. Give me 2 Kings chapter 5. 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 26 and 27. 2 Kings 5, 26, 27 is about Gehazi. And he said unto him, Went not, that was um, Elisha, okay, versus his servant Gehazi. And he said unto him, Went not my heart with thee when the man turned again from his chariot to meet thee? Is it a time to receive money and to receive garments and olive yards and vineyards and sheep and oxen and men servant and maid servant? Because he went behind him and collected what he rejected. He didn't want to take. The leprosy, therefore, of Naaman shall cleave unto thee and unto thy seed. For how long? And he went out from his presence a leper, as white as forever. So after he had lived and died, his children, is continues in the family. Cause as a result of what someone did. And then apparently the person now finally is a Christian. And is you see, he's going from one place to another, he's looking for a job, nobody answering him, nothing is working, no marriage, no husband, no wife, no good job. And he comes to church, he sits down and he prays. Cause it won't move, it won't grow, it will not prosper. When I was Psalm 109, verse 6, it was a prophetic cause that David placed upon the one that is going to betray Jesus Christ. Set thou a wicked man over him and let Satan stand at his right hand. That is talking about Judas. When he shall be judged, let him be condemned and let his prayer become sin. Let his days be few and let another take his office. You remember? His office, let another take. Let his children be fatherless and his wife a widow. Let his children be continually vagabonds and beg. Let them seek their bread also out of their desolate places. Let the extortioner catch all that he had and let the stranger spoil his labor. A whole, let there be none to extend mercy unto him. Neither let there be any to devour his fatherless children. Let his prosperity be cut off and in the generation following, let their name be blotted out. That is a cause. Generation upon generation. There is no amount of... You see, that is why I say life is empowered by the Spirit. At the end of it, especially, and again, those of them that are involved in occultic practices, idolatry, you worship other gods, you have gone to consult mediums, consult diviners, consult spiritisms, consult all those deities. They have carried you there. They have they told you that there is one woman somewhere and all of that. They gave you candles and all of that and you're born incense and stuff like that. You have been bewitched. A curse is upon your life. 
If you have joined your heart, joined them at one time or the other, the same thing is going to come upon you. You will not escape it. You are looking for the fruit of the womb and they told you that there is one place I'm going to. You are, because usually they are your friends. There's one woman that there's one place I'm going to take you and all of And you go and they give you some things and you wash your body and they tell you use it and wash your body and then drink this other one and do all those things. Fetish. You have consulted another medium apart from God. Cause. And then tomorrow, you wonder why is it that my life is not... And they will not tell you what they have done in the past. Another way causes come is people who are related to you, maybe your parents, Genesis chapter 31, verse 30. Genesis 31, 30 to 32. And now, though thou wouldest need be gone, because thou saw longest after thy father's house, yet whereof, wherefore thou hast stolen my gods. This one was Laban. You know, Jacob served Laban for that three, seven years, and after he left unannounced, he took the wife, uh, Rachel and uh, Leah and all of that and took them. And so when Laban now found that he pursued them, and so when he caught up with them, he was now asking Jacob, why did you do this? What is your problem? Why did you? So the discussion, dialogue ensued. And, uh, and now thou Though thou wouldest need be gone, because thou saw longest after thy father's house, yet wherefore hast thou stolen my gods? Why did you steal my gods, Jacob? And Jacob answered and said to Laban, Because I was afraid, for I said, peradventure thou wouldest take my take by force my daughters from me, because he was afraid. So he did, he said, maybe Laban, being a wicked man, he might not want him to go with his uh, the daughters, because he has served him and all of that. So he decided to take them and run away. And verse thirty-two, and Jacob now said, with whomsoever thou findest thy gods. Let him not do what? Live. Before our brethren, the son, thou what is thine with me, and take it to thee. For Jacob knew not that Rachel had stolen. So Rachel stole those gods. He hid it. So when Laban, when Jacob now say, go search, I don't want to read the whole story, but I will show you what happened to Rachel. So, when Jacob, uh, Laban searched for his gods and all that, he didn't find it. It happened that Rachel hid it under the whatever she was sitting, the uh, box she was sitting on. She opened it and put it inside and sat on there. And then when Laban now came, uh, Rachel said to Jacob, please tell Laban my dad, you don't have to tell me to wake up because I'm in my period. I don't want, if I get up now, something will happen. And so, you know, they avoided it. So that was how he escaped it. Now look at what happened. Let me show you what happened afterwards. Genesis 35, verse 16. And they journeyed from Bethel, and there was but a little way to come to Ephra. And Rachel travailed, and she had hard what? Labor, 16, 17. And it came to pass, when she was in hard labor, that the midwife said unto her, Fear not, thou shalt have this son also. Verse 18. And it came to pass, as her soul was in departing, for she died. 
that she called his name Benoni, but his father called him Benjamin. And Rachel did what? Died. Why did Rachel die? Why did Rachel die? A childbirth, because there was what? A curse on her. Because Jacob said, Jacob being the husband, said, if anyone is found with this, let that person die. So he didn't know that Rachel had it. So finally Rachel died. There is no cause. There is no cause without a cause. These are the things that are going on. Sometimes in people who are related to you, sometimes it's your father, sometimes it's your mother. It's your relation, somebody who is directly related to you, who have the authority over you. Can put, place a curse on you. And then you carry that curse and you'll be walking about and you won't know. Why? Because we are the we are the one. God has washed us, brought us from the Mary clay, and told us, "Come out from among them. Touch not on cleansing. Don't have anything." So when God is telling you to live a righteous life, when He's telling you to live a holy life, a life that is separated from sin and sinners and from the world, and all, so that you don't go and defile yourself and get problem, get problem into your life and all of that, you won't know. You say that because these people are preaching holiness, because they are preaching always righteous. It's not about holiness. It's not about righteousness. If it is not about holiness and righteousness, it's about what? So what is it about? The Bible said that Jesus Christ hated iniquity and he loves righteousness. And then God anointed him and raised him because righteousness exalts. Sin is a reproach. So how is it that righteousness and all are preaching? So if it is not righteousness, so what is it? So if I'm not talking about righteousness, it means I cannot do business with you because you will lie and dupe and cheat me. That's what we have in the body of Christ today. Even Pastor one, somebody has been sending me text and send me text. If you see the dozen of the text, to help me do counseling and be counseling and can, what is a counseling? A pastor, she gave him books to sell in trust. What one point something million and dollar that up to today? Pastor has refused to pay. Pastor. And he's preaching, you know. He's behind the pulpit and he's preaching. And the woman is suffering. Suffering in the hands of the people she borrowed the money to buy the books and give the man. The company that she called, they got the books from and all of that. They were on her neck. They have done all sorts to her. He said, do I take him to court? I said, the Bible didn't say you should take him to court. So what then do I do? Follow the script. He said, he has done everything. He doesn't want to answer anybody. This is our problem. It is not too much prayer. It's not too much fasting. You don't need more fasting and more prayer. You need more holiness. You need more righteousness. You need to live right. You need to say the truth. You need to be honest and decent. So that your prayer will not be hindered in the first place. You make promises, you don't keep them. You tell people you will do X, Y, Z. We never got to do it. And you think you are smart. You think you are clever. Okay.
There is a flying road that is perching in every of such people's houses. Your prayer can, because the one that sent him there is God. <laughs> you can't take it, your prayer can't take it away. Let me mention some. Another source, self-imposed causes. You brought it upon yourself. Matthew 27, 24. I've read it before. Matthew 27, 24. When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing but that... Rather, a tumult was made. He took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See ye to it. And 25 then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us on and on our children. Let his blood be on us. They brought it on them. Let his blood be on me. Let it be on my children. So he came. Genesis twenty seven eleven. Eleven and thirteen. Genesis twenty seven eleven. And Jacob said to Rebekah, his mother, Behold, Esau, my brother, is a hairy man, and I am a smooth man. You remember what is going on here? My father, peradventure, feel me, and shall seem to him as a deceiver, and I shall bring a curse upon me, and not what? A blessing. Now, see, 13. And his mother said unto him, Upon me be thy cause, and my, my son, only obey my voice and go fetch me there. Let the cause be upon me. And that cause came. And when we are talking about it, these are covenant people. Oh. These are covenant children of God. They've made covenant with them. It is even more devastating and more deadly in the New Testament amongst us who are Christians, who are eating and drinking from the same, eating the same body and drinking the same blood, who have answered the call of the new creation and we are drinking from the same spirit he said through this through one spirit you are baptized into the body so we are all members of the body of christ and god has been telling us in the scripture he said do not lie to one another do not deceive one another in first corinthians 11 that is why he said in taking the communion without descending the lord's body you eat and drink unwardly without discerning the body of Christ. Check your life with your brothers, what you have done and what you have not done. The ones you have defrauded and lied and, cheat and cheated and did all that. And you come and be eating up from the same. He said you bring damnation upon you. It's written in the New Testament. You bring damnation. You are born again, filled with the Holy Ghost. We are talking in tongues. You bring damnation upon you as a result of your dealings with your brothers and your sisters. First Corinthians chapter 11, 26. We 
For as often as you eat and drink this bread and drink this cup, you show, you show the Lord's death till he comes. Verse 27, Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be what? Guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Hey! You know, eh, most of you here, you pray as much as I, you pray more than I do. And I have to be very honest with you. And I lie not and I mean what I, most of you here pray more than me. And you fast. I'm not just talking to the people here. When I mean people here, I'm not, I don't mean this, even those of them who are watching. Prayer, you pray. While you are praying, you dishonor and disobey your husband. While you are fasting and you are praying, you la- you see gimmicks, manipulations, and all that. You know how to do it. You can't. That's why the prayers you keep firing fire. If you fire prayer the way you fire prayer in righteousness and holiness, eh? By now. Nigeria would have changed. Look at our country, Nigeria. Look at the prayers. He said, my people who are called by my... And when they quote that scripture, they don't read line after the line. They don't read it line by line. They, they don't read in between the lines. They just, they just quote it like that. Because that's how we used to do it. If my people who are called by my name, Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, if my people who are called by my name should do what? If they should humble themselves. Number one, you have to humble yourself. Number two, and you have to pray and seek my face. Number three, you have to do what? Turn away from your wicked ways. If you don't do this, you will not hear your prayer. If you don't turn away from your repentance, we have talked about repentance. What people think about repentance is, Lord, I am sorry. So being sorry is not repentance. Anyway, this is not the time to discuss that. You can enjoy God. You can enjoy life. You can become everything that God wants you to be. I believe it 100%. No doubt. God didn't create you and brought you so thus far in order to continue to struggle. No. Something is wrong somewhere. And it's simple. Do you need to go to school in order to live right and live a righteous life and all of that? No. Do you need any special education? No. Do you need to know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody in the higher places in order to do that? No. It's just a change of mind. It's just to discipline yourself. Say, I will not do this. This is not good. I will not go there. It is not good. You will not be, I will not be party to this. No matter what. No matter what you promise me. No matter what you want to offer me. I would rather remain this way. It's just as simple as that. And for you to be able to say that and stand on that means you know, you have to know your rock, the rock upon which you stand. It means you have to know Jesus Christ. We have devastation on all kinds of misery and all of that. Every day, look at petrol. Look at petrol. Is it not petrol they call it? You know how much they're selling fuel now? You know how much is it? Hmm? They are target, they want to increase the fuel, whatever. I bought fuel in this life that I'm living. I remember when I used to go to petrol station, I bought fuel, six Kobo. One, two, three, four, five, six Kobo. I remember in Abuja when we were buying fuel, 11 Naira per liter.
there are nations who don't have crude oil in their country. Hmm? They don't have crude oil in their country. The price of petrol they buy per liter is not as much as what we buy that have oil, that have crude oil. Can you, how do you, how do you marry these two? Their target is to raise, they are going to sell petrol 270 naira per liter. If they don't make it this year, they will make it because once the election, they are just holding on because of the election. Once it's over, once they cross over, the next thing is that they will take it up. They've been pressing them and pressing them and pressing them. They know that if they allow them now to, APC will have a, already they have a problem. Corruption wickedness in the heart of the people. They are insatiable. If they get 100 billion, they want to get 100 trillion. If they get 100 trillion, they want to get 900 trillion. If they get 900 trillion, they want to buy the whole Nigeria. Put in their pocket. Insatiable. You can never be satisfied with the things of this life. Just like you buy a brand new car now and all of that, you drive it two, three, four months, you are tired, you start looking for another one to buy. You want to change it and get another one. That's where you are. You will never be satisfied. Never. Nothing in this life satisfies. And you keep going and going and going. That's what they are like. God will deliver us. Now, what I want to say this is this. Give me First Peter chapter 3, verse 9. Another thing that you must do, you must do it. You don't have an option. Watch. Not rendering evil for evil or railing for abuse, but contrary wise, what? Blessing. Knowing that you are there unto what? Called. That you should inherit what? A blessing. Now listen. When somebody curses you, when somebody abuses you, when someone persecutes you, when someone takes your rights, do not curse the person back. If you curse the person back, you will cut your blessing. That is why he said, bless them that do what? Pray for them that do what? Persecute you. Don't pay them back in their own coin. If you do, you cut your blessing. They say idiot. Me, you say idiot. Your father, idiot. Your mother, idiot. Your cousin, idiot. Your grandmother, idiot. Your village, idiot. When you finish, you come back. Holy, holy. Lord, you are holy. <laughs> And the Bible says, lift up your holy hand. These hands are not holy. They are dirty. You see what we are doing to ourselves. The problem is us. The problem is not God. It's learning the principle, learning to live by the principles of the kingdom that you are in. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despisely do what? Use you and persecute you. Give me Romans chapter 12, verse 20. Therefore, if thy enemy hunger, what do you do? If he thirst, do what? For in so doing, Verse 21, 
Be not overcome of what? But overcome evil with what? It's as simple. If you are accusing me, the Bible says, clear conscience, fears, no. If you are accusing me, and I know that I didn't do anything wrong, I won't, I won't, it won't, I won't raise my voice. I will just keep quiet. I will just be laughing. I will tell you I didn't do it. If you don't believe me, that so be it. Anything you like, be doing. I won't start and be exchanging words with you. Why will I be exchanging words? You are accusing me wrongly. Because the Bible says when you are accused wrongly for what you didn't do or for doing right, you say rejoice because that is the will of God. That's your blessings coming. But when you go and start fighting and say what you are not supposed to say and do all kinds of things, you, you won't enjoy yourself and then you cut the blessing from coming in your life. What is due to come to you and that? Because at every point, at every turn, when there is trial and temptation and all of that, is actually a test. You know, before there is a promotion, there is going to be a, an exam. Okay? It, you don't know that every day, every time you are writing an exam, you are writing an exam. God is giving you an examination, not the one that you do in the classroom, out there in the field, in your interaction with people. The way you respond to them, the situation that come up and all of that, that is what determines your promotion. Not necessarily your prayer that is going to promote you. Not necessarily. For years now, I have not fasted and prayed for promotion and all of that. It comes naturally. Do the right thing. Remove all these bottlenecks on the way. You see the blessing. You see the light. If you have you ever noticed in your tap one day I had that experience. There was no water in the tap. I opened it. It wasn't. We tried everything, shake the thing and all of that. But there is water in the tap. But it's not coming out. Only to discover that there is a rust inside that blocked the water from coming out. But the water has been coming. We go when the other place we check the other water was rushing. We raise check the other one. The water, but why is it not coming here? But the water is in that pipe, but it's not coming out. Something is blocking it from coming out. Cause take it out of the way. The water flows on its own. We keep forcing heaven and forcing heaven and forcing heaven. Meanwhile, the blockage is in us. Some of us have our cost things. Things that are cost. We bring them into our lives, bring them into our houses. Because a lot of us, you know, you, some people, some, you say you like, you know those people who say, they, I, I don't have anything wrong with the painting. Yeah? Sometimes they say, they, well, I will be looking at this painting. I say, now, wow. You won't know whether, is this one a human being? Is he a stone? Is he a ground? Is he a house? I don't know what it is. There are some that look like demons. But he's painting and all of that. All kinds of funny, funny things that do not glorify God. He must glorify something. And that thing that that picture or that uh, sculpture that glorifies him is what would attract the presence of that thing inside. Finally, I've read this before. I want to show you what is what's going on. Give me Joshua chapter 6. Verse 18. Joshua 6, 18. I'll close with this scripture. And ye, in any wise, keep yourself from what? Keep yourself from what? Accost things. Lest you make yourself what? Accost. When you take of the accosting and make the camp of Israel a cause and trouble it, problem, keep yourself from accostings. They will hinder the flow of the blessings of God in your life. They will hinder prayer from being answered. If you have sickness in your body, it will hinder the prayer from coming to pass. The healing. You cannot be healed. 
Because there is an accosting in your house. Joshua 7, 1. But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accosting for Achan, the son of Kama, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, the tribe of Judah where David came from, took of the accosting and the anger of God of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. And Joshua sent men of, from Jericho to Ai, which is beside Beth Havin, on the east side of Bethel, and spake unto them, saying, Go up and view the country. And the men went up and viewed Ai. Anyway, it was when they now went to war. One little city, I. These people turn against them and finish them and kill them, massacre them. And Joshua came crying. Why? And God said to him, I cost him. Look into your life. Do you have a constant in your life? What are those accosting in your life? Unforgiveness is an accost thing. Malice is an accost thing. You are specialist in malice. For weeks, for months, you won't talk to your wife, you won't talk to your husband. You won't talk to that person, you won't talk to that brother. You keep accost things in your heart. Unforgiveness is cost. Malice, backbiting, hypocrisies, evil speakings, murmurings, grumblings. These are costs, things in our life. If you are carrying them, it is devastation. Let go. It is for your good, no matter how. If I've said it before, if you are finding it difficult to forgive, the, go back to Jesus Christ. Go back to the Holy Spirit. Tell him, he's your helper. This person hurt me. This person did this. Give me the grace. Don't tell God to punish him. Give me the grace to forgive him, to let go, Lord. You have shed this blood, this love of God abroad in my heart by the Holy Spirit. I can't do it on my own. Remember, Lord. That's why I pray. That's what I tell him. That's how I pray. Remember, Lord, you said without you I can do nothing. And in another place, you say I can do all things. It's only through you. So I need that grace to be able to. And then another thing is that I pray for that person that hurt me, that did that thing. Lord, bless him. Have mercy on him. Just forgive him. He doesn't understand. Just like Jesus said on the cross. Have that kind of heart. Your life will blossom. Things will begin to happen. Doors will begin to open on their own. The struggle will cease. When you go through challenges, you know that it's a welcome challenge and all of that. You are, you are happy and you are excited. It's a walkover. Stand up to your feet. For those of you who come to church and sit down and hear this and you are sleeping, the enemy is doing a fast one on you. He's doing a fast one on you. Believe you me. And it shall not be so in Jesus' name. Amen. Eternal Father, what else shall we say to you? But thank you because the entrance of your word, they give light. is a lamp unto our feet. is a light unto our path. How can a man amend his way? Lord, you said it is by paying heed there unto your word. And Jesus said you are clean because of the word that you hear. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, as many as have heard you speak to them through me today, 
I ask that the blessings of God, the grace and the mercies of God, let it come upon each and every one. The ability to let go any accosting in their lives, any malice, any unforgiveness, any backbiting and evil speaking and murmuring, whatever that does not glorify God in their lives. These are the things that have been defeating us, Lord. We look up to you today from here. We are come at our help. You say to come before your throne of grace that we might obtain mercy and then find grace to help us in this time of need. Lord, we apply for your mercy today. Let your mercy, oh God, by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, cleanse everyone in the name of Jesus Christ. If there is anything that is in your heart, someone that you are holding onto because of what he did or she did in your life, at this moment, you don't have an option. I want you to let go. I want you to tell God today, so so and so person, I forgive him, I forgive her from my heart. Let your heart be clean. The Bible says, as long as it is within your power, be at peace with your brother. As long as it is lies with you, let go. Do not hold anything back from now onwards. In the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, say with me, Heavenly Father, today, with all my heart, I let go every heart, every wound that has been in my heart as a result of what someone did to me, as a result of what that brother did to me, as a result of what that sister did to me, whoever it is. I release the person from my heart. In the name of Jesus. Father, today, everything that does not glorify you, every acorn in my life, unforgiveness, malice, murmuring, backbiting, evil speaking, hypocrisies, lying, and all what not, I renounce them today. I ask for your mercy today. Forgive me, Lord, from my heart. I repent. I renounce them. In the name of Jesus, today, I welcome you, Lord. I acknowledge you. You are the Lord of my life. You are my God, my Lord, and my Savior. I receive you with all my heart. I enthrone you in my heart today. In the name of Jesus, Satan, today I break every covenant, every relationship, every accosting, whether they are in my house, whether they are in my life, I renounce them, I break them, I reject them. In the name of Jesus, they will never have hold on me. In the name of Jesus, whatever that was said about me, by any person alive or dead today in the presence of God I renounce them I reject them today in the name of Jesus instead of curses I receive blessings in the name of Jesus the blessings of God begin to flow in my life begin to flow in my direction begin to flow in my marriage begin to flow in my family Begin to flow in my children. Begin to flow in our bodies. In the name of Jesus. In my business. In my career. Be blessed. In the name of Jesus. Thank you Heavenly Father. My hands are blessed. My feet are blessed. My life is blessed. In the name of Jesus. Thank you Heavenly Father. Glory be to your name. Just go ahead and thank God. Eternal Father, I thank you for these ones today. Lord, you are the one that began a good work in them. 
you are faithful and will perfect everything that concerns them. You set them on the high places. You are the one that leads the poor and place him on high to dine and wine with the princes. And so shall these ones be. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bless them with the blessings of God. May the grace of God and the favor of God continue to shine in your life. That everything that you have lost over the years, there shall be a restoration. I declare restoration. I declare restoration in your life. I declare restoration in your body. I declare restoration in your business. I declare restoration in your career. I declare restoration in your marriage. I declare restoration in your family. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your name. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Say, I am blessed. It's not a, tell somebody it's not a confession. Tell somebody, I am blessed. You are not telling the person, look at the person. Just meet one person. Tell the person it's not a confession. Tell the person it is the truth. Tell the person this is a reality. There is nothing Satan can do about it. There is nothing anybody can do about it. Because I am a blessed man. And you cannot curse me. Because no curse, curseless will come to me. I am the righteousness of God. In Christ Jesus. Give the person high five. Amen. That's how it should be. And that's how you should live your life. When you meet challenges and whatever, it is a stepping stone to a higher height. Don't be, you will see the kind of confidence and the boldness that will come in the face of adversity and all of that. You will walk over it in Jesus' name. Other people will go there, they will be swallowed. But you will go there, you will walk over it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Remember, uh, Berea Academy continues tomorrow by 6. And again, I also want to say, everyone who is into building, all the building the part, um, personnel and all of that, and all our pastors who want to see you, all our deacons who want to see you when we finish, including all the builders. Uh, and also, we are looking, we want to... We need a driver, a driver, a driver. We have a bus. We need a church a driver who is going to drive that bus. A full-time employment. You're going to be the driver. There are places and all of that. We're going to drive. That bus has been packed there for close to a month or if not more. It shouldn't be that way. We need a driver to, so that we can use the bus to do the things that we want to do. Amen. God bless you.